Hey y'all, Jay Wilson from Monarchs Reporting here. I'm coming um, with coming at you, coming to you uh, with a quick tutorial about well, fixing up a customer's report or a subscriber's report who's trying to figure out how to use the NL first function with Dynamics NAB. And he found me through my tutorial, my web blogs. Um, I did a video about using the NL first function to look up data from another table. And he's like, Jay, I did all your steps, but my report doesn't work. So let's take a look at his comment. He said, why would my result return a blank? It's almost like there's nothing in the field of the table I'm looking at. Um, and to put a, more, more words around it, he said, I'm building a report that generates revenue by customer. Revenue by customer. By use of the word revenue, I know right away he's talking about the finance tables. He's talking about the GL entry table. However, the report only reply, uh, provides the source number which should be the customer number. And I'm using an NL function to return the full customer name from the customer card, right? Everybody wants that, this makes sense. But when I run the report, only some of the fields are populated and some will be blank. Okay, let's decipher. He says some of the fields will be populated. So I know the function works sometimes. Um, and usually when a function usually works but sometimes doesn't, um, you either have a cell reference problem or you didn't allow for the possibility of special characters. So I asked Jorge to email me the report um, in design mode and let's take a look at it. Again, my name's Jay Wilson. I'm over at onyxreporting.com. I provide Jet Reports training services um, for customers around the world. If you have a question or comment, feel free to email me um, and we'll see what we can work out. Okay. Um, so let's go find his customer name function, and here it is. It's an NL first to the customer card, pull the name where the number is H18. He did everything right, he, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. And when it sometimes works and sometimes doesn't, let's check his cell reference. Now, cell reference looks fine. He's using a relative reference. The most correct way, I think, I like to see that dollar sign in front of the H that says, um, the source number or the customer number is always in column H. I like to see that, so I put that in there. Um, and then he needs to allow for the possibility of special characters. Sometimes source numbers or vendor vendor names, or sorry, good Lord, sometimes customer numbers, vendor numbers, fixed asset numbers, sometimes they contain special characters. So in the function wizard, there is a button that says allow special characters right here. Plain as day but most people miss it. <laughs> um, and what it does is it concatenates quote at at ampersand in front of H18. Um, in addition to allowing for special characters, it allows for the possibility of blanks. Um, but I got an interesting error message. It says company test 1234 does not exist. Obviously, Jorge had a different company name in here, um, and I just put in a different company name because, you know, confidential information and all that. Okay, so test one, two, three, four doesn't exist. Okay, so for me, I'm using Cronus International, inter, good Lord. Okay, as soon as I put in a company name that actually exists, my NL rows function comes back, my NL first function is working the way I want it to. I've got a pound value over here. Don't guess, never guess what the problem is. Just press the debug button. It says invalid table posted rental header. Okay, I'm using standard nav. Um, Jorge is obviously using some custom solution that has, you know, rental tables in it um, that don't exist in standard nav. Uh, so this problem is not never going to go away for me because um, I don't have these tables in nav. But notice here, quote at, quote at, at ampersand, I added that in because we want to allow for the possibility that the document number is either blank or has special characters. So, um, so quick fix number one, use quote at, at ampersand to allow for special characters or blanks. That's huge. Everyone forgets that and I see so many workarounds. I see people do if errors, if statements. Don't. 
just use quote at at ampersand. Okay, that's piece number one. Uh, and then my report works. Um, and let me put a let me put a filter in here for do I have data for six star? I think I do. Okay, my report works. The name column is, you know, oh, the I'm pulling in customer names. This is great. This is exactly what I want to see. And when it's blank, when the source number is blank, that's fine. Uh, scroll through here, that's fine. Now, another uh, piece of advice I gave to Jorge that I already implemented here. Sorry, I'm lazy. Uh, do, 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 do. Use source type to show source type. <laughs> um, I'm just going to leave it at use show use source type. Okay. Um, the source number is a customer number, but it could also be a vendor. It could also be a fixed asset. It's you know what made this transaction happen, and the source type is the column that says, is it a customer or a vendor or a bank account? So I also included the source type so that we could see that sometimes it's customer. And if I put in a star here, we're gonna see, um, we're gonna see some interesting data, hopefully. Okay, so here's, no, Jay, don't drill down. So here I can see sometimes it's a vendor, sometimes it's a customer, sometimes it's a bank account. But let's look at this guy here. I have a value. Um, and this is, and I'm using air quotes, this is wrong. In my implementation of NAV, I have an overlap between customer numbers and vendor numbers. So I have a vendor 30,000 and I have a customer 30,000, but Vendor 30,000 is not John, John Haddock. Vendor 30,000 is something else. But I got data because I have overlapping customer and vendor numbers. So this is technically wrong or could potentially be wrong in a world where the source type is not a customer. So I'm not going to fix that problem here, but I'll just write it in use if or something to accommodate for if the customer or if the source type does not equal customer. You have to do something because as you just saw, um, there are opportunities for this report to be wrong or you add a filter and that says the source type must be customer, at which point, you know, then your report is never wrong. Right? If by the report definition, I force the source type to be equal to customer, then I don't have to do any fancy dancy magic to accommodate for this. But um, in a world where I don't filter by source type, this column could potentially be misleading. That's just something that you got to keep your eye on. Okay, there's one more place where this report is wrong. What happens when I change this back to uh, test one, two, three, four? When I change this back to test one, two, three, four, um, well, my report breaks as it's supposed to, and the error message says there's no, the company test one, two, three, four doesn't exist. In my NL rows function, I'm using a company equals to filter by the value in F19. Um, here's a rule that you may or may not know. If you're using company equals, then you must use company equals in all NL functions. If you use it once, you have to use company equals every place else. So let's see if I did that. I've got my company equals here. Do I have a company equals over here? And the answer is no. 
And this is the real reason why Jorge sometimes got customer names and other times did not. Well, source type not, not uh, source type excluded. Um, what happens is is in their nav implementation and company. Uh, test one, two, three, four, they have a set of customers. And in the defaults company, they have another set of customers. And sometimes the customers exist in both companies and other times they do not. But what's happening here is this report is pulling GL entries from test one, two, three, four. And this function is pulling customer names from the default company. It's not pulling company customer names from the same place. In other words, short version of the story, add company equals to every NL function. Otherwise, you end up pulling data from, I'm using air quotes, the wrong company. Lord. This actually speaks to one of my rules that I teach in all of my Jet Reports training classes. By the way, Onyx Reporting, um, in addition to fixing reports, we build reports for clients and then we also uh, um, provide training services as well. Um, one of the things I teach in all of my training courses is put all filters in the top left. Um, because Cronus International was not in the top left corner, it took me a moment to clock and recognize, oh, they're filtering by company. It took a while. As soon as I put it up here, the next person who comes along is going to see right away, oh, I'm pulling data from an explicit company and I don't want to use the default and because they see this they also know the rule hopefully that you have to include company equals in all of your NL functions and they should scan through and just check did the person who developed the report actually put in company equals this will solve your problem okay um, for those of you who are using Jet Enterprise, another thing I like to teach is I like to teach people to then also include a data source equals argument to make sure that you know whether I'm pulling from NAV or the data warehouse or the cube. And oh, by the way, Onyx Reporting, we do provide services for um, people who are on the Jet Enterprise platform who are building uh, cubes. So we do that as well. Um, and then again, you also need to add in data source equals nav, or whatever your data source is actually called. Me personally, I'm lazy. Um, so as soon as I start doing company equals, what I'll really do is I'll write filters equals, and then I'll do the range. Um, and why are you unhappy? What did I do? Oh, sorry. Here, I broke this. OK. Um, instead of typing company equals and data source equals and all that stuff, I'll just do um, filters equals and then pass in a range for my filters. And in fact, as long as your headings um, match the table name, you can um, pass in all of your filters using filters equals. And of course, we'll do the same thing over here. I'll change this to filters equals. Adjust my range to include nav, bam, and same thing over here. If you don't know filters equals, learn it. Um, it's a nice little shortcut to get around not having to type as much. Okay, last learning point. Some of you might be wondering, well, Jay, um, why do you only have to pass company equals to the NL functions and not the NF functions? Why is there no company equals here? Or you might <laughs> say, but Jay, um, 
the nf functions knew where to go, why isn't this nl going to the right place? Because it is filtered on source number. Why didn't it go to the right company? OK. To understand the answer to that question, you must first understand what this is that I'm looking here, this NL rows thing. Now, a lot of you guys will call it a data dump. I know that's the vernacular we use in the Jet Reports trainings that come from the USA. Um, and it's not wrong. It is, in fact, a data dump. But more specifically, what is created here, the artifact that you see here is what's called a record key. Um, and I've vlogged about this before, but just to talk about it again, a record key is the address of one record in a table. And in this um, string, I can see that my data source is defined, my company is defined, the table that you go to, and the record that you pull, so the entry number is one, um, is all defined in the record key. And what an NF function does is it says, use this record key, use this path, and pull the GL account number. So because the record key by definition includes a data source and name, sorry, data source and company name, um, I don't have to go in and add company equals because it's part of the record key. Now the NL function, on the other hand, does not have that. Let me take, uh, this is what Jorge originally had. The NL function, it just says, go to the customer table and pull the name where the source number is whatever the string is right here. Now, nowhere in that description did I say, use this company or use this data source. And because I didn't specify, um, Jet by default will just use whatever is up here, the default company and the default data source. And that's what was happening to Jorge, like I said. His report was looking at test one, two, three, four, and the name and final destination were looking at whatever the default was, and they were just they just happened to be different. And that's why he wasn't getting results. Well, that's the end of it. Um, again, my name's Jay Wilson. I'm the lead consultant and Jet Reports train over at Onyx Reporting. Um, just wanted to throw a little report together to kind of help Jorge figure out why he wasn't seeing what he was seeing despite following my tutorial video. Um, if you like what you saw, please like my YouTube channel um, or subscribe to my YouTube channel. We also have a mailing list that kind of delivers these articles that, that I post um, to you guys. Um, or just shoot me an email and let me know how you guys are doing. Thanks so much for your time, and I'll catch you later. Cheers. Bye.